Bienvenido amigos. Right now we are in the neighborhood of Mira Flores. It's a very popular neighborhood. As you can see, right here. It's right by the beach. Right by the beach. Beautiful beach views. And this is the neighborhood where uh, everybody wants to stay. And today we're going to find out why. Let's go. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So Miraflores, Miraflores. When I was uh, doing research on where to stay or what to see, stuff like that in uh, Peru, in Lima, basically everywhere I looked, the only neighborhood that anybody ever said that you should stay in is Miraflores. So I can tell that it's a very, very popular, popular neighborhood, um, especially amongst tourists. A lot of tourists stay here. A lot of visitors, I think, stay here. And as I've been walking around the neighborhood, I've noticed, like you can see right here across the street, uh, there's a lot of hotels. There's a Marriott right there. I, meant, I noticed a bunch of other hotels. Also, as you can see, like attached to the Marriott, there's a Starbucks. There's a lot of like uh, um, American, you know, USA uh, chains like Starbucks and stuff like that uh, around this neighborhood. So you can see that it definitely caters to tourists. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of tourists around here already. A lot of people not speaking Spanish, speaking other languages. A lot of people uh, speaking English, and uh, a lot of people like trying to. Uh, offer tours. Some guy offered me a, a sightseeing tour and uh, people out here like trying to sell stuff. So it's definitely a very touristy neighborhood. You can see actually right here, right next to this park, there's a, oh no, gracias. Um, some guy just asked me <laughs> if I wanted to do a walking tour. And uh, there's a tourist information booth right here. Like very, very touristy neighborhood, but also a very, very nice neighborhood. Uh, the more I walk around here, I can definitely tell there's a really nice neighborhood. Um, makes me wonder how expensive this neighborhood is. Just judging from uh, from the look of like the buildings and everybody that's around here and all the different businesses, I'm betting it's pretty expensive. Actually, right down here by the beach, there's a parking garage and seven souls, seven soles. Sol souls are the uh, currency here in Peru. Seven soles per hour, which uh, is like $2 an hour, which in, I don't know, in a really expensive city in the United States, that would be like pretty cheap, um, pretty cheap parking. I'm pretty sure in like San Francisco in the United States, you get like, if you paid $2, you would probably get like less than 10 minutes. You'd probably get like five minutes worth of parking. But here in Peru, uh, $2 for an hour for parking, that's yeah, pretty expensive, I would say. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's a pretty pricey neighborhood, but I mean, you can see why. There's also, I've noticed, like around this neighborhood, um, there are a lot of, uh, like, security, police, and private security, there's two police officers right there. And, uh, like, not just police, but private security also. So, it seems like it's a very safe neighborhood, a neighborhood that, like, the police are really focusing on so that also like would give it away <laughs> that it's a pretty touristy neighborhood if you can't tell already but uh, man just down here by the beach these views are just incredible very amazing views you can already see down there on the highway though some of the infamous Lima traffic and uh, I am actually not staying in this neighborhood uh, but I wanted to come visit but the neighborhood I'm staying in is just a short bus ride away. But that bus was riding in the infamous traffic of Lima, Peru. And I will tell you, uh, the morning traffic was, uh, was pretty packed. It was pretty packed. There's a lot of traffic in this city. And um, another thing I've noticed about Lima so far that I've been here is uh, they don't really have like a fully unified bus uh, and or public transportation system kind of like broken up there's a lot of private buses that run just along certain streets 
and you can just pay in cash for those. It's a little disorganized and it's a little um, sort of hard to wrap your head around, but I'm getting there. Definitely getting there. Let's take another look at this view. It's really, really great. Great view. That parking garage that was up there, that's for this mall right here. This little, like, small Galleria type mall right here next to the beach. Um, there's like, see, and it's all like, there's a lot of uh, Western and or United States chains, KFC, Pizza Hut, Burger King, haagen -Dazs, Chile's. There's another Starbucks in here. So, if you're, uh, if you're looking for some place to go to like ease into the culture shock a little bit, uh, this would probably be the place for you if you're coming from like the United States. I would say this neighborhood would probably be a, uh, a good a good place to start of course it's not just the beach in Miraflores you go up the avenue here past this uh, like this hotel that we mentioned that we saw the neighborhood continues up the avenue and there's a lot of stuff to do up here especially what I noticed in this neighborhood is there's a lot of casinos in this neighborhood so uh, gambling is legal here in Peru and up along this avenue I noticed like, oh, I don't know, like a bunch of casinos. In fact, there's one right here attached to the Marriott. It's right there, Majestic Casino. I don't know if you can see it. There's a tree in the way, but Majestic Casino. So a bunch of casinos up along here, if that's your thing, you wanna do a little gambling? Well, this is the neighborhood to do it. Along the avenue here, Lots of uh, apartment buildings, lots of hotels. Really nice avenue, actually. Uh, you get a nice sea breeze off the ocean behind you. And the avenue, I would say for like, mm, I don't know, seven, eight blocks from the beach up this way, you go, uh, you get up to a, like a park. There's two parks, actually. One is Parque Kennedy, and the other one is Parque Siete de Julio, I want to say. 7th of July, maybe 7th of June, I can't remember exactly. But there's two parks that are up there uh, that are also really nice. One of them, Parque Siete de Julio or Junio, I can't remember, uh, is like, strangely enough, kind of become a cat park. There are a lot of stray cats in the park and people like put out little dishes of food and water and keep them filled. So when you go in that park, there's a bunch of cats wandering around, um, stray cats. And of course, because people keep them like fed and watered, they're like healthy stray cats most of the time and not like poor, sad stray cats that look like they're about to die, which you do see in uh, some cities. But uh, luckily in this park, there are people who are taking care of the cats. There's also a lot of casas de cambio, money exchange places in this neighborhood, and banks as well. And outside the banks, I've noticed there are people who I think are actually either working for the bank or they're, I don't know, they seem official, they seem officially licensed in some way, but they're changing money too, just like in small amounts right out on the street. But uh, there's another one, casa de cambio. And there's pretty much like two or three on every block around here. So if you're uh, if you're in the neighborhood and you need to change money, this is the place to do it. I've also heard there is a uh, Claro store here in the neighborhood, and I actually really want to try and find that. Oh, here's a nice, very nice hotel with a very nice breakfast buffet. I kind of really want to try and find. Uh, I want to find this Claro store because um, I actually was unable when I first got here. On the first day to uh, to get a uh, SIM card from my phone, so I'm actually like walking around with no internet, and I would like to get a SIM card, a tourist SIM card. Now it's different than uh, like when we were in Chile, you just buy a SIM card prepaid, one gigabyte, right out of vending machine, and that was good. Um, but here they do it a little more like Argentina, where we were also. Uh, you go to a Claro store buy a specific one for tourists it's something like I don't know how many gigs exactly but it lasts for 30 days so it should cover me for pretty much the whole time that I'm here 
So let's go find that place. I think it's actually right here on this street. So let's check it out. On the corner here across from the Fiesta Casino, there's this Vivanda, which is a very fancy grocery store. Very big, very fancy. Over here across the street, the Atlantic City Casino, also. And then uh, right here in front of us on the corner, on this side of the street, there is the Estelar Miraflores, which I don't know what it is exactly. I imagine it's like a very, very nice hotel. And also in this neighborhood, we found it. Claro. Claro. Centro. Centro de Atención al Cliente. It's, uh, it's just a big Claro store. Customer service center. We're going to go in and get ourselves a SIM card. So we got the SIM card. Very easy. Five minutes. In and out. No problem. They had uh, a bunch of different packages. One we went with. 10 gigabytes. Uh, it's good for 30 days. Unlimited text, talk, and all that other stuff. Uh, good for 30 days. And it cost uh, 30 soles, which is like 8 or $9 dollars. Not bad, it's a pretty good deal. And right around the corner, we are at Parque Kennedy. Parque Kennedy, named after John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States. Parque John F. Kennedy. It's a nice little park. This is sort of up at the like uh, northern, I guess, end of Miraflores. Away from the beach, probably like uh, like I said before, like seven or eight blocks away from the beach. Very nice. Nice green space. Oh, there's a cat. There is a stray cat in here. Like I mentioned, in these parks, I don't know if it's just the Parque Siete de Junio. By the way, I checked once I got internet. It is Siete de Junio, 7th of June uh, park. And unfortunately, I haven't done enough research uh, yet about uh, Peru to know why that date is important. But uh, I don't know, maybe we'll cut in a little voice over here and let you know. The park commemorates the date of June 7th, 1880, which was the date of the Battle of Arica in the War of the Pacific against Chile. Anyway, here's a bust of the former president, John F. Kennedy. And this park, like I mentioned, is right next to another park it's right up here, Parque Siete de Junio. It's a nice park. Let's go. Let's go over there and take a look. Also in this neighborhood, I've noticed there's a lot of little like pedestrian walks, right? Paseo peatonal, a pedestrian walk with little shops and cafes and restaurants. I've noticed this in this neighborhood. Always the sign of a nice neighborhood when there's like a a pedestrian walk, right? With like a Nice, fancy-looking restaurants and cafes. Uh, always the sign of an upscale neighborhood. We noticed that actually in uh, our neighborhood, uh, La Staria. La Staria, where we stayed in Santiago in Chile. There were a lot of uh, little walks just like this. They looked almost exactly like this, actually. With restaurants like this. Also kind of like uh, the Paseo Peatonal, uh, Sarmiento, where we stayed in Mendoza. We had a nice pedestrian walk that was like this. Um, it's still morning, so a lot of these restaurants aren't like super busy yet. But a nice little walk here. And like I mentioned, this is not the only one of these that I've seen in this neighborhood. I've seen a bunch of these uh, when I've been walking around. Right in between the two parks, there's like a little street fair situation. A little walkthrough area, people selling stuff. Uh, not everybody's completely set up because like I said, it's still early in the morning, so I had to come here early. But you can see there's people selling stuff. There's a cat. <laughs> people selling clothes, little gifts, and uh, I don't know, just lots of, lots of stuff here. Lots of good stuff. Someone's selling honey over here. Jewelry, stuff like that. Feria de Emprendedores. So I don't know if this is like a permanent thing that's always here or if this is just a temporary thing that's happening right now. Looks like it's kind of a temporary thing that's happening right now. 
because it says Feria de Emprendedores 2024, meaning they do it once a year. But it's pretty big. There's a bookstore over here. There's a store back there selling posters and whatnot. And this looks like, I don't know, cheese and milk, puzzles, t-shirts, jewelry. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff they're selling in here. And here is Parque Siete de Junio, 7th of June Park. It's a little bigger than Parque Kennedy. It's very nice also. They have these nice flowers and uh, there's like some sculptures in the middle. There's a, uh, that one looks sort of like some sort of mosaic ceramic pot, very large. There's a, you can see over there, there's two cats just sort of chilling next to those people. And like I mentioned before, let's see if you can see, there are like stray cats all around here. Here, over here by this tree. Hold on a second, we'll walk over there. You can see over here the cats hanging out over by the tree. And uh, like people put bowls out with food and water for them. So I guess the cats just keep coming back. I mean cats, you know, they know which side the which side of the bread is buttered, that's for sure. So if you walk around this park, you'll see a lot of stray cats just sort of hanging out in the park. It has become a cat park. You've heard of a dog park before, and I always thought. Well, you couldn't have a cat park because they just get in fights with each other, right? But apparently you can if you put out enough food and water for them. Here's the uh, sculpture that we looked at before. It's pretty cool. There's another one further down. This sculpture right here, which I think is very cool. Large uh, blue bull, ox. I don't know, pretty cool. Pretty cool sculpture. I think having sculptures in a park gives it a lot of character, right? And if this sculpture is pretty famous, then, well, we know that that is a famous historical butt. I'm going to keep making that joke. If you keep watching my videos, I'm going to keep making jokes about famous historical butts. Anyway, right next to the park here, there is a, uh, there's like a church over here. It's right on the edge of the park. Let's go take a look at that. Here's the church. And unfortunately, because like I said, I just sort of jumped into this without doing a lot of research so far. I don't know what this church is. It looks pretty old. Although that can be deceiving sometimes because sometimes you get uh, like uh, neoclassical places that are like, they look old, but they're actually newer and they're meant to look old. There was a church like that uh, in Cordoba that uh, I remember. Anyway, this, uh, what is this place? Santuario Archio, Archidiocesano La Virgen Milagrosa. The Sanctuary, Archdiocese Sanctuary of the Virgin Milagrosa. Anyway, it's a very nice church. Let's see if we can take a look inside real quick and maybe just film real quick inside and see what it looks like. A very beautiful church inside and out. And there's also this other building right next to the church that looks kind of old. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Here, take a look. It's a cool looking old building. Very, um, I don't know, it looks at least a few hundred years old. Hold on, let's go around this uh, little thing here. Yeah, look at this. I don't know what this is. It's really cool. It's got the, I imagine it's some sort of government building because it has the flag of uh, Peru out in front. I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe it's like the Miraflores 
city hall. I don't know exactly how it works. It's Miraflores, I think, is like a, a commune within the city. Um, hmm. We'll have to look this up. We'll have to look up and find out what exactly what this is. Because it's a very cool building. So we're going to head out still here in Miraflores out to uh, another sort of famous landmark, Parque Chino, which is like a park right by the ocean um, that is like a little bit further away from the part of Miraflores where we were before. And we can actually walk along uh, Avenida Javier or Avenida, Avenida Jose Pardo. And in the middle of the avenida, there's like this pedestrian walk that runs right down the middle, has like benches. It's like a long walking park almost for this whole section from like the one end of Miraflores where we were by Parque uh, John F. Kennedy, all the way out to uh, a plaza at the end here, Plaza Centro Americo. And next to that plaza, there are a couple of parks, including Parque Chino, where we're gonna go. So let's go check it out. All right, so we're here at Plaza Centro America at the end of uh, that avenue. It's a pretty decent walk. It's about, um, I don't know, 10, 12 blocks. And in the middle, there's this really cool fountain, Central America, and all around flags, different Central American countries, Costa Rica, there's Nicaragua, Guatemala over there, El Salvador. Well, they don't have the El Salvador flag on there, unfortunately. Uh, Honduras right here It's a pretty nice plaza like I said kind of a long walk um, Maybe like yeah, like 12 blocks or so but it's a nice walk because you get to walk along That nice Avenue down the middle with the trees on either side very very nice right over here uh, We're coming up on Parque Chino So we're gonna get across this traffic circle here without getting run over and once we do that we should be able to check out the park one interesting thing about the way that neighborhoods work here in Lima is each neighborhood, the way you would think about it, if you're like from the United States, uh, in a big city, each neighborhood here is actually a district and the districts are, are pretty autonomous. They have their own mayor. So like Miraflores has its own mayor um, and the other districts, same thing. So it works a little differently than, uh, than it does in the United States where like a big city like this would have a mayor and then underneath they would have like a, you know, a city council with maybe like aldermen who are in charge of different wards in the city. Um, I get the feeling that different uh, districts are a lot more autonomous um, from the central like city government of, of Lima and Lima isn't necessarily like um, it doesn't necessarily function the same way that a city government would function if you're like from the United States. Parque Chino, right over there. All the way down there, past that other three jetties down or so, that's where we were um, at the beginning of the video. All right, we're here at Parque Chino. And here, right uh, at like the top of the ramp to get down to see the, the little plaza with the pagoda, there's these two lions, leones de fu. Leones de fu. Very cool. A little plaque about the history of Chinese immigration in Peru, which we're actually going to talk about in an upcoming video because it is very very important to the history of Peru and we're gonna make a whole video about Chinese immigration to Peru and the history uh, between Chinese people and people of Chinese descent in Peru and like the relationship between Peru and China today anyway let's head down here check this place out very busy today lots of people down here taking pictures I mean this is like the perfect picture spot right there's plenty of stuff to take pictures with. Different statues, the pagoda up here, the little bridge going across the, the, the little water there. This Buddha, they're burning incense. Prosperidad con el Buddha Chino. Prosperity, Chinese Buddha. Playing 
vaguely Chinese sounding music, which is kind of cool. And of course, we're right here, this beautiful spot, like right out by the ocean. Come around the back side of the pagoda here. Look at these views. Very cool. Very, very cool. You can definitely see why this is a popular neighborhood, why people want to stay in this neighborhood. And I mean, look at that. These views are almost better than the views that we were getting down at the other end of the neighborhood. And you can actually see right down there where we were. Yeah, like right down there, that's where we were. Pagoda. Beautiful little pond, little fountain. People can throw coins in and make wishes. Very nice. Very peaceful. I mean, there there are a lot of people here, of course, but it is a very kind of a neat, sort of a sort of a tranquil spot, even though there are quite a lot of people. Sculpture of two adorable little cartoon pandas. Very cute. And, uh, well, that's about it. I think there's more of this park, maybe further, further down. Let's go look and see. Little sign explaining the park, El Parque Chino. El Parque Chino is a symbol of culture, and tra traditional culture and art of China. Not just a green area, it's a zone that, uh, something the, ah, once again, my Spanish fails me. Anyway, I always start off strong when I'm reading Spanish. Start off real strong in the first two or three sentences. And I come across like two or three words that I don't understand. Everything falls apart. Such is the way. If you've been watching my videos, well, you know that this is the way it is. It's a nice little playground out here where uh, the kids can play and a little mini exercise area, which I've noticed, I've seen these in like different uh, places in countries so far in South America, in Argentina, in Chile, and here in Peru. The parks, a lot of them have these little outdoor exercise areas, which is really cool because not everybody can afford a gym membership or wants to pay for a gym membership. But if you can come here and work out on, you know, do some like body weight exercises and stuff, out in the park. It's absolutely free. Keep yourself in shape. And as we're walking back towards the other side of uh, Miraflores, where we were, there is Parque El Faro de la Marina, the park of the lighthouse of the marina. There's a lighthouse out there. There you go. Beautiful lighthouse. Beautiful park. Another place along the, along the beach here where you can just hang out Enjoy the day. Very nice. And everywhere you go along here, every park you stop at, still beautiful, beautiful views of the ocean out here. And of course, the uh, Lima traffic. Legendary Lima traffic. This is like the main big traffic circle intersection of uh, Miraflores. The avenue goes up that way, Arequipa. I think it's called Arequipa. Um, that's like a main avenue that runs north-south through the whole city. It goes up that direction. And then when it gets here to the park, it splits off in two directions. There and over here. If you go this way, it goes all the way down to the beach. Well, both of them go all the way down to the beach, but that's the direction we came from. Right here, walking away from that big traffic circle, down that way. One of the streets that comes off of it is uh, Avenida Ricardo Palma. You head this direction to the east, go a couple of blocks along this street, you end up at the uh, Metropolitano, which uh, is basically like a bus line 
that runs along the freeway north-south through the city. It has its own dedicated lane, I think, and uh, it has like platforms where it stops. So it's basically like a, functions more like a subway or a train, but it's actually a bus and it runs along the highway. The bus that we took here from uh, on the Avenue uh, Arequipa, I think it's called. Well, anyway, that avenue that I was talking about that runs north-south through, north, through the city, that bus just runs through regular traffic. So, like, in the morning traffic, when it was pretty busy, that bus is just stuck in traffic along with everybody else. But this bus, the Metropolitano, it has its own, uh, yeah, it has its own lane on the freeway. So I think we're going to take that to get out of here much faster. It should be, at least, much faster to get back uh, a little further north in the city. Estacion Ricardo Palma and see like there's one of the Metropolitanos right there So like I said, it's got its own lane on the highway uh, So it's basically it works and it's got a platform where you board it. It basically works like a train except it's a bus Mass transit in Lima is a really like interesting thing and We're probably gonna make a whole video about it because it is like it's kind of crazy and interesting and the way it's sort of developing um, is pretty interesting too so maybe we'll make a whole video about that like I mentioned we're not actually staying in Miraflores I just wanted to see the neighborhood because I know it is so popular um, with uh, tourists and it's also like a, just a really you know like pretty famous neighborhood here in, uh, in Lima so I definitely wanted to see it but if you've watched some of my other videos, um, like from other cities that we've stayed in, you know that that's not like really my kind of neighborhood. Um, I don't usually like to stay in the really, really touristy neighborhoods. Although I do recognize like why people do want to stay in a neighborhood like that. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I think that's gonna be it here. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video.